What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Polly C. Here's the tag on the bottom of the furniture. We've got 100% linen. You can see there up on the left side of the screen. Linen can be very, very finicky. So I'm going to do some pre-spotting. First, I'll show you what we're up against here. This is a consignment shop, a high-end consignment shop. So we're not sure what this is. Looks like some kind of dry matter, could be bleach, could be lotion, body lotion. So we will work on that. Got my upholstery kit. And then the guy who sets the floor up laid a shelf on it this morning by accident. Got something on it here. At least he confessed to it. So we'll be working on that. But this is a pretty expensive piece two large size sofas. You can see when I say we're going to be spotting, there's various stuff like this. I don't know if that's bl dry blood or maybe food or who knows. And there's a bunch of various little spots on it. So obviously you can't come out in a rush. You cannot steam clean this. I mean, I've seen people do it, but you got to be really careful and i'll show you why my kit has a mitt some pads i've got a fine delicate brush for tamping and scrubbing <clears throat> excuse me so we'll get started we are going to use the orbital polisher and some upholstery foam I'll be applying the upholstery foam with a mitt after we do some spotting. Here, I'm first going to attempt to try a little bit of Go Oxy on the edge of a rag. It's mixed maybe one ounce in my 32 ounce spray bottle. And we're getting some transfer, so that's good. Like I said, on the linen, you got to be careful. What happens with these expensive sofas, in the batting underneath, they put a separate zip-up cover, which I'll show you down the road here. And inside that zip-up cover, like a pillowcase, they put white and black uh, down feathers. You see the transfer happening? That's a good sign. You don't want to smear this all over the place though. You want to try to tamp it out. But the problem with the feathers, they're organic. So you got to be really careful. The linen, you know, I've mixed the, the peroxide at a eh, relatively highly diluted level. So we're not going to have any issues there. You can use a little bit of peroxide. That's what the Gooxy is. However, the down feathers, they can be really problematic. I've got a buddy who steam cleaned one just like this. When it dried, it turned just black and brown everywhere. And what occurs is any liquid that touches, especially the peroxide like this, any liquid that goes below the surface of the fabric and touches the uh, inner batting, those feathers, that you'll immediately, it'll bring up a browning. And you'll have to neutralize it. I'll show you some tricks, but I didn't spend much time showing you us using the orbital polisher and a pad because for time's sake for the video, I just wanted to show all the pre-work that goes into this. Here I am tamping that spot. You know, we're not immediately spraying a whole bunch of different products on it and trying to remove it. We're just gently working it and seeing if it's something that may come out. But you can see the amount of solution that we're using, mainly water with the Gooxy. We're putting a lot in there. If I had to do this over again, I would probably put maybe a plastic plate underneath the area I'm working on work on it, 
slide the plate out, dry underneath, and then dry the surface so that we wouldn't have to deal with issues of browning from those uh, down feathers. So again, you could see a little more transfer. By the time I'm done with this video, this spot and all the other spots will be gone. And the only reason I'm rubbing in both directions is obviously you can see it's not smearing. It, it's transferring into that cotton cloth that I'm using, using a white cotton cloth to begin with. And I push my thumb down in there to create a divot or a little valley so that when I spray the Go-Oxy on there, it will stay in that one section and continue to oxidize whatever that is. Chocolate, dried chocolate, blood, we don't know. We'll see what happens with this one. I think probably just some dirt or rust on the bottom of the shelf that he laid down. So again, we'll tamp it. We'll work on all these spotting, and I can't stress how important it is, is you know, your pre-spotting. Even on carpets, you know, we did, we did pre-vacuum this already. That's your first step. You wanna vacuum it real good, get all the dust and dry soil out of it. And then when you vacuum it, you'll notice all the spots and stuff you need to pay attention to. If it's not your big routine, just dirt spot that you could pre-spray or use the foam on, you need to use specialty products. And, you know, I usually carry, I've got the Go Oxy, which is the peroxide cleaner. We've got Magic Bullet, which is kind of a mystery stain cleaner. I do carry WD-40 for gum. I just spray it on the surface of the gum and let it dissolve and then scrape it out. I use Windex for ink. It has to be the original Windex, not the cheap knockoff stuff because you're not looking for the ammonia or the alcohol in the Windex to remove the ink. What Windex has is a wetting agent. If you read the bottle, the wetting agent, what that does is it makes the water just three times more effective or the solution. It gets into the ink and releases it. So I'll carry that. I have a Simply Citrus, which is an orange, organic, totally safe i think it's a zero on the health rating uh, booster and i use it as a spotter it's an all-purpose cleaner but today it is going to be the goaxi diluted down very good and then when we get to it we will probably i think i used a little magic bullet as well on a couple spots until i realized that it had down feathers below it because you can see how all of a sudden just from the solution it gets really dark in those areas that's actually it's not just because it's wet you see that that is just a, a real quick brown out from the peroxide in the feathers <clears throat> So I ended up, I carry citric acid. I think it's called Mallard's, Mallard citric acid. I buy it in a five pound bag, I think on Amazon. It's a powdered form of citric acid. And basically what citric acid is, is I used to use vinegar. I'd bring white distilled vinegar with me for neutralizing uh, brownout. But the vinegar, you know, you have to let the customer know it's going to smell like a salad in here until it dissipates. Plus, I didn't like telling the customer, you know, anything they could buy at the grocery store. I don't like them to think that's what we're using, even though that, you know, vinegar is acetic acid. So your citric acid is the same thing. It's basically a powdered form of acetic acid vinegar without the odor. And here I am opening this up. And you'll see it is full of feathers. It's a down, basically a down pillow. So now realizing what was going on, you can see it also has some kind of a crap underneath. Like, I don't know if that's blood or iodine or something on the actual cushion. So what I'll have to do is work this off and then I'll have to dry the cushion underneath and then dry both the top 
and the back side to make sure we don't have any browning. And that's why some guys will look at a tag and just look at the fiber. And believe it or not, that's what I did on this job. I I showed the tag at the beginning. I kind of looked at the fiber and I saw, or I saw the batting. It said polyester if you go back there. And in hindsight, I looked at it again. It was 10% polyester. And then the rest is the goose down or whatever they call it. So, which is all organic. So I got to dry that out. Here's one of the white feathers popping through. I'll show you, obviously, feather is organic. So peroxide, you don't want to use peroxide on wool or anything organic because you can damage it and it will also create a browning. So there it is. All right, we'll get, and we also have the blow dryer like you saw, we're blow drying these areas. It takes a lot longer to do, so it, I did charge appropriately. And as far as the foam goes, I ran out of the high-tech foam. So I am just using a, a safe upholstery traffic lane cleaner that um, I think it was, it was great value. Walmart, um, if you look at the, the red cans, uh, sometimes I'll use the 409, but not on this stuff. The red can tra high traffic lane cleaner, upholstery cleaner is safe for wool. It says right on there. And all you're doing is you're using a, a dry method on it. And I probably will reorder some more of the high-tech foam that I like to use. It just, I know that it works really, really good. But in a pinch, you can use the uh, red can there. Here's a black feather. You see what I mean? More organic. So this is taking me a lot longer to neutralize and dry these spots that we spotted because of the moisture. You can see right there on the down cushion. If you don't fully dry this out, it will actually wick up to the linen fabric. You'll have a dark mark, but because I'm using citric acid to neutralize it, the citric acid will prevent uh, any browning. If you've, you know, in my steam cleaning truck mount days, I'd get a call the next day, something returned or a spot returned. I'd go out with a little bit of um, citric acid or white distilled vinegar and put it in a bottle and just mist the area and it instantly disappears. The browning gets neutralized. Basically what, what you're doing is you're neutralizing the pH scale. So the alkalinity even in the water will raise the pH levels up and the detergents that you use to clean will also probably be, you know, I think Green Dragon's probably a 9, 9.5. Um, so you got to be careful. And the foam, I'm not sure what the foam is, but anyway, the adding the citric acid brings the, if you were at a 10 pH on the alkalinity level, with your product and then you sprayed it with the acetic acid, it brings it down probably to around a four, depending on how heavy you mix the citric acid. Like I said, this spot we will get completely out by the end of the video. You know me, Poly C, I do not give up, we keep going. We're discovering these things as we go and I thought this would be a great video for somebody that wants to get into upholstery cleaning because boy, these are the hidden things that can create a nightmare for you. Uh, you know, and like I said, one of my friends cleaned one of these and it was in the, he had to take it outside to thought maybe the sun would dry it out. It turned nasty, nasty. And it looked like, okay, you just bought this person a new uh, sofa loveseat set, but it wasn't the case. It just had the goose down or the down underneath it got wet and it browned it all out sprayed it down with a citric acid dried it out in the sun and it turned white again so you got to know what you're doing and that's why these groups you know the good groups there are some groups that 
uh, just feed on negativity. You can't do this. You can't do that. Oh, you shouldn't be doing this or that. You know, it's you. You've got to learn on your own. But you, it's good, like the Pad Life on Facebook, which is end cap stores group. You'll get a lot of seasoned veterans on there. You can ask questions, and they're just a wealth of knowledge. They're always eager to help. So if something does happen, you know you can kind of question it. Here's the polisher that we're going to use and the regular white pads. Like I said, I'm going to go over all the areas after we spot it with the foam and the upholstery foam and that mitt. I'll use two of those mitts. And the mitt and the upholstery foam, you know, the upholstery foam is meant to be scrubbed on, let it dry, then vacuum it off. So it's actually getting a clean with the foam. Here is where I use the magic bullet. I mean, look at this. We, <laughs> we transformed all this garbage that was on this. I was thinking that um, she was going to have to buy a new piece of maybe like felt and maybe get those small circular Velcro connectors and just put a new piece of felt on the bottom to cover this up. But it came out just absolutely great. In fact, after that came out there, I took that bottle with the magic bullet and I just kind of misted the entire brown uh, base there and just wiped it out real good with the glove as well. A little bit of magic bullet left in there. So, piece of cake. It looks like all of the lotion rings. I'll get those out as well or whatever those rings are. But look at the, the mitt. I'm gonna change mitts. Look at the other side, how clean it starts out. I don't wet the mitt. I just shake the foam can and squirt the foam into the mitt and then real heavy and apply it and rub it evenly across the upholstery. And with these tufted backs where these buttons are, that's bleach right there, but <clears throat> with the tufted back, that's the other thing if you don't know what you're doing. You'll see these turn completely black, and we'll have to dry those as well. But anyway, the tufted backs, they take a button when they upholster these. And it's, usually it's a metal button, and it's upholstered with the white fabric, and they pull it from the backside and tie it off. So it, that's how you get that look like there, where it's tufted in. But if you wet the button when you clean the couch, the button with the metal underneath will rust. And then you got problems. Because you, you can't use a rust remover on linen, or you shouldn't. So what I did with the dry foam is I just put the foam in the mitt and just took my thumb and cleaned out each one of those little circular holes and the little foldovers that you can see the foldover in the front and the foldover right there. So it basically is dry. It's just being scrubbed out, cleaned by hand. And that prevents you from having that problem. I've seen guys steam clean these. And honestly, I steam cleaned one myself uh, years ago. And that's how I know that the buttons are metal. And I came back, the lady called me out and it was just all of those holes were rusted out look at that gone beautiful still has to dry i mean even though we're air drying it with a blow dryer with the heat it's still got to fully dry just where we wet it and it will continue to oxidize but absolutely beautiful you've got to spend the extra time obviously we spent probably an hour with the orbital machine scrubbing and polishing it all up I did not show that in the video, but there you go. Those are some tips for you. Be careful what's underneath the, the cushion fabrics. You could have a nightmare and also the buttons if they're metal. Looking good. Hope this helps somebody out there. If you're kind enough to give me a thumbs up, that's going to help grow the channel so I can put some more cool content out there and share this information with those of you that might be interested in getting in the business. I appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your busy day to watch my videos.